You made a very big decision to leave Amazon after 23 years. You didn't need to respect me. Like you had such a great career at Amazon. And then you come home and say to your wife, you know what? I'm going to move after 23 years and I'm going to be CEO of Flexport. What does she say? And what does that decision-making process look like? Uh, well, she said it's about time. And yeah, in all honesty, but it, it's, uh, you know, I, I, I consider the sign I married the right woman, you know, which is probably the most important decision I've ever made. But, uh, you know, I was in a place where I just wasn't happy with what I was doing. You know, I, I love the people I was working with. It's an incredible problem, but I had moved into a role where I was like a, you know, most, I was a bureaucrat in a lot of ways, you know, it was basically, you know, talking to government and PR and, you know, managing my boss and, you know, and, uh, I was not in a place where I was spending my time building, you know, a Amazon's still a builder, you know, oriented company, but I personally was not in a place where I was getting good to do that anymore. And, you know, I didn't start at Amazon with the intention of, you know, having a 2 million person workforce, you know, and running the large, one of the largest companies in the world. It wasn't my plan. I like, I like working closely with a team and getting into the creative work and building. And so I wanted to go do that again. That's where I get a lot of joy. Uh, I didn't want to stop working. I love, I love working. I just, uh, it, you know, it was time to do something else. When does it make the transition from operator to kind of bureaucrat and politician almost? I think it started changing for me a lot, probably around 2015 or 16. You know, we, when I took over uh, leading the global ops team around 2011 or so in there, um, we had just started the growth curve uh, on fulfillment and ops. So you, you can go back and look at the square footage ramps, you know, this sort of big elbow in the curve around 2010, 11, 12, where FBA growth really took off the fulfilled by Amazon, where third party merchants were moving their products into the company, really took off in that time period. Uh, and so we grew a lot over the next decade. And so, you know, we were an enormous operating company by 2015 or 16. We were starting to build out transportation networks. And so it really came to a place to where my, my life became much more about delegating and managing, you know, a lot of global issues and less about building. Um, but you know, that's it's kind of, you know, that journey of, you know, decade or so from 2011 to 2023 of building that for Amazon uh, is, is what excited me about Flexport. You know, it was really this, you know, we built that at Amazon for Amazon and for sellers who were part of Amazon's infrastructure. And what I saw was the power of multi-tenant, you know, the power of, uh, you know, multiple companies being able to benefit from the scale of the total. And, uh, the rest of the world needs that, you know, the rest of the world needs that for the environment to pull carbon, you know, to improve carbon utilization, to pull waste out of the, the processes. Uh, and they needed to be competitive. You know, with small business to be competitive with the largest business in the world. So I must, I changed. So I, I just wanted to go do it again. What did you learn at Amazon then that you've not taken to Flexport? And what did you learn at Amazon that you have taken to Flexport? Like what worked that is replicable and what worked that isn't? Or what didn't work that you don't want to do again? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I love so much about Amazon. I, I sort of view myself as uh, somebody who helped established parts of the culture on Amazon over, over that time period. And I, I what I love is the most is the customer centricity, you know, this place of like, and you know, really do make a decision for customer. You know, a lot of people say they do and, and they really do relevant right to the point where it's a trade off between the money and the customer, you know, <laughs> like it, you know, you really only know if you're customer centric in a very, very hard moment where you're faced with doing something that the customer would like but it's going to cost you a lot of money that you really, really, really don't want to spend. Uh, and that's when you discover whether you're customer centric and Amazon was that or is that, and, uh, we're going to make Flexport that that's who we, that's how we operate today. And that's our, that's how we're going to build the culture. What's an example of how Amazon is that just for people to resonate with and understand, you know, think about it as a, uh, a damage or a return, you know, there's so many times. Um, like if you're uh, for many customers uh, right now, if you get an item, you say it's damaged. Well, you know, as soon as you, as soon as it registers that you printed the label to the back, we give you your money back. That's expensive. 
and there's fraud in that. And, uh, and, but it's super positive for the customer to, you know, from an Amazon perspective, be able to drive that efficiently from a Flexport standpoint, we've had the same thing. Like, you know, Hey, uh, this trailer got held up at the port, you know, for some duration of time. And, uh, you know, a typical forwarder would say, well, it doesn't matter why or how we're going to send you a bill for that. You know, we're looking at that and saying, Hey, you know, these days of this, you know, we really should have gotten it out that we're not going to build a customer for that. That's, you know, that's on us. That's an operational defect we need to resolve going forward. It's really these tension points to where you could choose and the customer probably wouldn't know the difference or it would be equal to what competitors do, but you know, you can do something substantively better for the customer, but it's going to cost you money. What have you not taken to Flexport that either did or didn't work? You know, I think you know, when I look at, you know, cultural history for me, it's a, um, I think, I mean, Amazon's a fairly intense place, you know, and it's a, um, you know, Amazon, I think you kind of, you know, it's a very, you know, you're as good as you, what you did yesterday kind of thing. There's not a lot of longitudinal you know, stickiness in that way. And I'd like to think that what we're bringing is the intensity for customer, the intensity for process um, with a, a more, a little more empathetic uh, and a little more uh, collaborative uh, type of approach to engaging together and a little more long-term engagement success. 